Well, race fans, the time has finally come here tonight for your main event of the evening. As we are traveling down here to Fort Worth, Texas, we're going to see tonight the RTC I Racing League Pro Series come at you live from that from the famous Texas Motor Speedway. And the action is about to kick off and get hot down here at Fort Worth. I again, everyone, I am Christian Gustavus Trevor, and welcome back to the show as always. As we get prepared to get ready for tonight's action here on the tri-oval end of the track here. Take a look at our track tech talk out of the gate here. The wind and the weather. Well, it's pretty hot out here, and it's pretty subtle, I would say. But thankfully, considering it is October, it's holding up all right. So I think we'll be doing okay for that end of the spectrum. But as we get ready for our field of drivers lineup here to come on board, let's take a look at the starting guns. On the pole, it'll be Parker White, and the 95 is outside. That's the 42 of Cole Williams. Run number two is going to be Brendan Kohler, and the 36 is outside. That's the 33. Tyler Kahn. Run number three is going to be Aiden Yikesman Kirk and the 39. Outside of him, it will be the 66 of Justin R. Smith. Run number four is going to be Mitch Hobbs, and the 89 is outside. That's Jared Darling in the number one. Run number five, Sartage Man, the 49 is outside. That's Joseph Costello, the number 60. Run number, run number six is going to be Randy Weilman in the 44 is outside. That's the Farrari Kana Trafare. Row number seven is going to be Big Dog Daryl Arnold. And the number six is outside. That is Eddie Spruill in the 27. Row number eight is Mike Cambeo in the 24. It is outside. It's Anthony Gangitano in the number 69. Row number nine is going to be Mark Lewis in the 84. It is outside. Hayes Booth in the number two. Row number 10, Mason Navy Chase Thompson in the 21. It is outside. That's Kenny Heath in the 55. Rounding out your top. Drivers here tonight, 20 have come to play. 20 have come onto the track to make their name. And last week at Bristol Motor Speedway, controversy and chaos ensued. Not really controversy in the way you're thinking, just a lot of drama mixed in. 
But now, that's all behind it because now they have to go from short track to long track. Mile and a half time at Texas Motor Speedway. It's time to go racing. And the reason why I say a bit of controversy and kind of drama down there because that 95 of Parker White seemed like he was the guy to beat, but the man behind him, Brendan John Kohler, would literally catch the brakes of the century and take him off his podium and off his pedestal, winning out his race there at the, at the half mile long short track. Now here at the mile and a half of Texmore Speedway, there is going to be a bit of a change up, a bit of a, a bit of a scenario booster for some. As you see, Kohler already making a move off on White. Parker's going to be very consistent and patient, though, waiting for him to make that wrong mistake and that wrong move to get around him and take back advantage of this to go on board with Cole Williams. Number 42, Nebula Esports currently holding his line down. Meanwhile, right behind him, Mitch Hobbs and Aiden Kirk are following for pursuit. Tony Westcott saying good luck to all drivers. Good to have you on board, Westcott. Leading him in, Aiden the X-Men Kirker came up second place last weekend. Got kind of strung along in a little bit of controversy, obviously. Uh, in a bit of a wreck situation with lap traffic. He got into it with one of the drivers out there. Thankfully, all I think cooler heads have prevailed and everything has finally kind of cooled off. Again, it was Bristol. Their short tempers are going to come out. But here at a track like Texmore Speedway, this isn't really a track that can get your temper going as much as you really got to be watching your temperatures because these tires and this cars, they're going to have a lot of burning up and waste and a lot of troubles down there that they'll have to fight off with as we progress through the race. It's so already seeing some kind of taking it a little easier, some being a little bit more efficient and just letting it run immediately and get a jump start. And some getting kind of in the bit heap of things here. Unfortunately, Joseph Costello, the number 60, gets a little bump and tag there, although he's driving the number 3. It's supposed to be the 60. Got a little tag there from Brady Berkertheim. Wild in the number 44. You'll have to keep an eye on that one, see if anything happens in between there as we go back on board with Hayes in the booth to the number 2. Hey, he's right now doing a pretty good job hanging in there with the field and trying to get himself a little bit of a jump or two off. He's had some major problems really making some runs and making some passes here on PT Racing TV, but so far it seems to not be too worried about that today. Off to a pretty decent start here as the rest of the field kind of falls in pursuit. Back half of our field right now sees the 55 of Kenny Heath and then Anthony Gagitano and the 69 have a little bit of a duel out there. Gagitano kind of staying in proverbial spot. Well, Kenny Heath tries to get a little more speed under the hood. And look at the distance between Brendan and John Kohler and Parker White already. You can see White is giving up a lot of time, a lot of ground to Kohler. And all I see, I think a lot of it just has to do with his measures he's going to play out. I think he's really going for a fuel line tire strategy here tonight. And really the biggest issue with that isn't necessarily the uh, strategy it's a matter of making sure you stay out of that problem zone because it can get very difficult peewee carragher coming on board saying good luck y'all lori hennett booth saying let's go he's in the booth uh, ah lori never fail to make my day there darlin Back on board here with some passion squad drivers right now. We're on there with the 66 of Justin R. Smith, teammate right in front of him, Tyler Kahn. Looking to keep the distance and going, keep the run alive here. And again, the legacy, the biggest thing here is you're not going to see a lot of passing, a lot of hard racing in between. You're going to see more or less drivers kind of being patient and conservative on where they go because this is really only a one-line track. And I hate saying it, but that's kind of the re that's one of the reasons why I do Texmore Speedway is a bit of a hard one for me to call. Not because I dislike the track all the way. I, there's some things about it that's nice, but I just haven't really seen a race other than that road course. I love the road course down here. That that's really just the results. But it seems like on these trioval race this trioval racetrack. I don't know what it is, but it just seems like we can never get a full length, full fledged, like really good racing. So I don't know what it is with me, but I think it's kind of I think that's kind of the issue with this track. That's one thing I really, hopefully we can have tonight. But so far, drivers definitely being very conservative and very consistent here. So you're Wally Bennett saying watching you, Hayes, and Chris Meffer saying what's up, man. Chris, good to have you on board, sir. You'll see a little bit more of Chris Meffer here in the coming weeks. Here he'll be back on Thursday night action with Spartan Logistics Management LLC iRacing iRock Challenge Series. 
They've got a whole list of races and tracks coming up in the near future. You'll see them very, very soon. But, Chris, good to have you on board, sir. Right now, still battling it out in the back of the pack here. Joseph Costello in the number nine. Akana da Ferrari Chafari currently moving their way into the top ten section as Sartaj, man, the 49, giving up a little bit of room and a little bit of ground here to the drivers. Leading with that, you can just see how big and how packed this place is. There is just so much room, so much area to play in with and work off of. But again, the one area that everyone tells me and to really stay conservative on is that bottom lane. That bottom lane seems to be the run that everyone goes for. That seems to be where everyone finds their speeds and their runs off at. As these Xfinity cars are currently doing themselves a good favor too, trying to hang in there. Chris saying, glad to be here. And uh, just uh, I saw your message there, but that's why I had to bring up these are Xfinity cars for you. Yeah, these are the Xfinities. These are the Ford Mustangs, Toyota Supras, and the and the Chevrolet Camaros, of course. The Iceman cometh, the number 39 now, staying into the top five zone as he looks to try and knock down another one of Mitch Hobbs. Mitch Hobbs and them, last time they were out on the track, they ended up getting into a bit of a little kerfuffle, a scruffle, if you will, with some drivers getting kind of a little bit into the trouble zone area and a little bit of problems as we go into the instant replay here. Something going wrong for Kenny Heath in 55. Take a look at that from another angle here. It looks like he went into the infield here and opened up his own lawn care service. We'll find out why that was, though. Oh, you can see he was driving that thing in pretty hard there. Car goes into the wall, gets it out of there, and thankfully for him, the splitter does not uh, completely shred the car in half. So at least that kept it intact and kept it in play. That is the good news for him and his crew, but still a lot of work to be done around here. And speaking of a lot of work to be done, here comes that old Wiley Coyote himself, Parker White. The number 95 here right now already looking to redeem and get redemption for what happened last week. I talked to him earlier today. He said, yeah, I feel like I'm owed one and I feel like I'm literally deserving another chance at this. I know I can go out there and race with the best of these guys, but man, I will not forget how many times that I've been kind of just put in that bad spot in that bad slide and I just can't seem to catch a break. And as a driver, I'll tell you, it is frustrating. I understand where Parker's coming from, but, you know, on the other flip side of the coin, you know, as a, in the back of your mind, you got to remember, there is always that, that issue between luck and speed. Luck is really what helps control and garner your chances of having a good run or a, or a bad run. And strategy can do you so many things, so many things well enough, but over time, stuff like this just happens where you basically just have to really change it on the fly and you're not prepared. So, always you see though, Parker White definitely had caught Brent John Kohler a little bit unprepared there. He was not ready for him to sneak his way in around and out of three, and that opens the door for the race lead. So, now Parker White will take over the race lead as Brendan John Kohler tries to get back into this. Tyler Collins starting to actually get past some squad and up there to the 39 where that old Kirker Designs machine is laying in wait. On board camera here with Tyler Collins. He tries to continuously get closer up to the front looking for a piece of Kirker. Kirker though the man to beat here right now in that top five half. He's up one spot, Con is down one, unfortunately. Paul Cole Williams the 42. Ending up in the third place area. And last week, of course, again, like I said, just a lot of mayhem kind of just paused on around. And even I think one point, him and Parker White, as well as teammate Mitch Hobbs, got into it, unfortunately, there on the back straightaways of that track. And it ended up giving him a bit of a trouble area here. And it certainly gave them a lot of headaches and a lot of uh, talking to, I would say. And thankfully, I'd say the league is all right. And they've... There's one thing good about this league, man. These guys, these young guns and these young cats, they've got a good head on their shoulders. And, of course, you gotta, you got to get a group of people that are willing to work with you and help out anytime, any place. And that's what it's all about with this league. And they know it all too well. Chris saying on the chat here tonight, you got to save tires. Tires are the big, are huge here. They are indeed. The, you know, we see it. We see it time and time here with even this legacy version. 
The tires will burn up quickly. You just saw Kenny Heath a little minute ago. He literally drove it hard into turn four, but because the tires were pretty much worn tore off that thing, he can't get the thing, he can't get the car to rotate in nearly as much. When you don't have enough when you don't have enough rubber and on that on that on that bead lock on everything in between, the rim actually will not turn in nearly as much as you want to, and it ends up costing you a lot of time. It can get you in a big trouble zone, a big area. So that's right now what we're seeing as the 49 now. Sartage man is going to sneak his way inside. The 89 to Mitch Hobbs. Hobbs giving him a bit of an opening here as there's some trouble down there. May Stebby chasing Thompson. Well, he decides he's got to open up his own lawn care service as well. The 81 is in the grass getting it back out on the track. What on earth happened here though? Hold on. He has something gone wrong as well. Motor is quit. He's done. My, let's see what happened with the PT Mr. Replay, why that happened here. Came out of turn four. Everything seems okay here. And him and the 84 even, they both go into the grass, but Thompson getting kind of the worst worst end of the bunch. Got caught off guard and kind of caught in between. And he has literally left the scene. He's out of here. He's done. The 81 has, has completely blown the motor and left out on position. He will not return to the track. That's what the word is going through right now. What a tough break there for Mason Thompson. And we got even more problems down there. We're under caution. Whoa! Hold on a minute. We're... See what? I think I see a Kenny Heat down there and out of turn four. And that is the 55. Looks like him and Cole Williams might have gotten into it a little bit. Try to switch it around, take a look at everything here. And unfortunately, everyone's kind of jumping all over the place here. But. A solid green flag run nevertheless, but let's take a look at what happened here. This looks like a pit stop gone wrong situation. Here's our look at it. Here's what happened here. Looks like the 55 was trying to stay out of the way or he was trying to go into pit road. And I'm not even sure what the heck happened there. All I know is Cole Williams just got the shaft. Oh boy. I I don't really I honestly this one guys you can be the caller on that one, but I don't know what the heck Heath is doing here. I know he was coming out of pit road, he's trying to stay out of the leader's way, but you still have to watch how you're coming off that straights. I'm honestly kind of a loss for words on this one. You guys be the judge. I'm not gonna play the I'm not gonna play judge and jury on this one, but that was not what Cole Williams wanted to have happen at all in the 42's race is pretty much kind of tarnished a little bit just because of that situation. And yes, I know we're having a lot of technical difficulties tonight, guys. I apologize in advance. For some reason the glitch graphic gremlins can't seem to leave us alone even when we want to be left alone. But this is your first caution of the night here so far. Parker White with the race lead and currently holding the field down and trying to make sure that they know all too well what they're after. We'll take it down now though and talk with some drivers here and here from their point of views and what they're seeing. Have a little listen in right now. Here we go. We're going to take a talk with the Passion Squad man himself, Tyler Khan in the number 33 and a Tyler, right after that little wreck, I took a little side skirt to the wall there. How bad do you think the damage took? Uh, it, it was only 10 seconds of optional damage, so I don't think it's going to be much. I went ahead and got most of it fixed just because I felt like our cars, we had a pretty big gap between everybody else, like top five and back. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to hurt me too bad. For sure there, but uh, nevertheless, uh, obviously the passion squad being a very big help here tonight for you and the crew. Uh, what's what is going to be the thing for you and Smith though, leading back over the front? Yeah, I think definitely um, our cars were coming in right there before the caution. Uh, it seemed like we were about to start gaining a tenth on the field, or like half a tenth. We were getting a little looser, and I th definitely think long run uh, is going to be key to us getting in the lead. Absolutely. Well, nevertheless, Colin, appreciate your time here tonight. We'll see what happens for you and the crew. All right. Thank you, man. Dyer Khan here right now currently trying to see about making some ways and making some head dames here. 
But we're going to talk more with our drivers here as we continue on through. Let's go ahead and take it down now with Black Cloud Racing and present to you the Ferrari Connor Chafari in the lot 9, number 9, Ford Mustang. Now, Connor, you have gotten to three spots up from where you were at just a little bit ago and uh, rocked a little bit of a breast cancer awareness scheme on that one. What's going on with that, bud? Uh, is that about the paint? Yeah. Uh, October, just wanted to kind of mix up my paint a little bit. Just basically inverted my orange to a pink and just made all the logos pink. Just kind of go with it. Not a bad idea, man. But, uh, yeah, like I said, nevertheless, um, obviously the car coming into play for you, or is it still got a little ways to go? Uh, definitely good. I, I figured out how to save tires, so that's, that's a good thing since I got limited practice. But I think we're pretty strong. I, I think it's up. Just something I learned me and Brady Ryan can compete with the big dogs this week. Yeah, absolutely. Well, nevertheless, definitely got a little bit of work to do, but best wishes and luck to you. Thank you. Gone at the Ferrari Chafari on the line there, race fans. We're getting ready to get back to the green flag action here. First caution of the night. Hopefully, it will be one of our only cautions we see here. Referencing got a sacrifice early to reward later. That's true. Mefford saying, what's up with the tech? Uh, not really sure what you mean by the tech. As we get back to the green flag here, we're going back to the action. I'll, and I'll answer your other question in a minute there, Mefford. As we get back to the action here on the Facebook Live, and we're going straight down, in and around, on turn one, down turn two, the 44. Uh, Brady at Burger Time. Wow, man, looks like he's ready to open up a burger shop. Wait a minute. There's already a good burger shop down here. It's Whataburger. He's trying to find himself a bur He's trying to find himself one of those kind of burgers around here because he is eating it up as much as the tires getting eaten up on Texas. Track's starting to come into play though for these drivers as the laps wind down. Remember, 120 laps on this track really test the patience, to test the mindsets of these drivers and everyone in between. And that's the thing they're going to have to very much be aware of and be careful of. Those flat spots on those exits are going to really be tricky, but I think that front straightaway is going to be where most guys are going to find the most troubles if they're trying to make passes. It's just so narrow and so tight to master off of, but when you know how to hit it just right, you get runs like this. The 36 of Brendan John Kohler brings the Kohler Racing 36 into the fight, into the zone. We have ourselves a new leader. And the Iceman cometh. He cometh for one. He cometh for all. He's looking for a piece of white now. Barker is right in front. He's trying to narrow him down. Take it in. Mefford saying tack. He's talking about the tachometer there on the uh, cars there. And what you don't, and what he's talking about is right there actually. I think he was just shifting down in there. He was trying to shift back up, and then unfortunately he just did not find the right area. Happens every now and then. Leading him back in, almost a little three wide suit there. As you see, it looks like that's Mitch Hobbs in the number 89 trying to make him run off here. Old Mitch, don't find him in the ditch ever. He is looking to give himself a little runoff or two, make himself known and presence felt. He's got Hayes in the booth in the number two right in front of him now as Burger Time Wildman did not get enough of his water burgers. He's going down a little bit. Or maybe he had too many of them and all of a sudden it's, he's just put on a little too much. I don't know. You, you guys be the judge on that one. But right now he's still hanging in there. He's still going to try to put that five below 44 into the fight zone. It's our Taj Mando with a lot of company behind him. The WWE Esports guys are going to have a lot of work to do. Especially when those when those Apache Squad boys come into play, and even a little love and help never hurts for the Walter Esports crew. That being with the number two of Hayes Booth, they come down and around in the track zone. It is still the number 33 of Khan and Sartage Man battling for the top five. Meanwhile, Hayes Booth and Hedge Tops will have a little bit of a tussle there coming off the corners. Hey, Chris, I get asked that question all the time, but the uh, best way I can explain it, I don't run very many leagues. I only get like one or two leagues races in in a week. And officials-wise, I usually set like one or two days all to myself just to go out and race as many officials as I can. But generally speaking, if I got time during the day, I'll run at least one or two in a day. 
And that's kind of what I try to do. I try to make sure I at least get on the track at least once. And of course, when I'm running, when I'm watching a broadcast, I always get in the car and actually test out the track and give my personal impressions of this track. And I'll get more about that later on when I give you the idea here what I, what these drivers are feeling and seeing out there. And down the back straight away, the hard charges are now starting to be presenting themselves. There you see, that's where most drivers are going to find the opening and find a line to pass on. It's not going to be very easy, but you can pass pretty well there on the back straightaways. You really just got to hope for the best and catch a little bit of a break or two. And it all just works out in your favor and works out in your advantage. That's exactly what we're seeing right now. As the field continues to stretch them out, right now about a second and a half ahead, Brendan John Kohler is ahead of Parker White. Kohler might not be might not be the one that most would assume is the one that would take them all down here at the gate. But remember, last week nobody expected really what was to transpire and what was going to go down. We knew tempers would fly and all that, but I don't think anybody was expecting the positions to change as quickly as they did, especially considering those that were up a lap or down a lap just completely got nullified and changed up on the positions quicker than we realized it. Coming off around here, 11 laps to go, 11 spots up for Hayes Booth. He is the hard charge of the night, far none. Nobody even comes close. The closest he's even got to him is only up three, and that's Brady Burgertop Wildman, and then number four. Down on the inside, though, looks like the con. Don't call him the rattlesnake. Is now putting up a fight to the 49 of Oh, man. The rattlesnake reference is in relation to Robert Kahn. There are no relations between those two, so just be aware. Coming off out of the back straightaway three and down to turn four. Sartaj Mann looking to try to hammer down, keep himself in play, and he does. But unfortunately, that's at the risk of losing his top five spots. Tyler Khan sneaks his way around him. I can feel the power, I can feel the presence these drivers bring to the table. It is just an absolute sight to behold. Justin R. Smith, once more, the, P the Bash Squad boys are on their prowl, they're on the attack, trying to get up there with Aiden Axman Kirker, who currently rocks it in the third place position. Parker White and Brendan Don Kohler are your top two other in the field. And race fans, if this is your first time joining us in here on Pizza Race TV, first off, thank you so much for tuning in. And second off, if you want to and help support our channel and help us grow, as we know you, as you know, we will grow with you. Be sure to like and follow us up here on our Facebook and for the Facebook live streams. But to catch all the action and remember, and to catch even some exclusive content, you head down to our YouTube and to subscribe there, where you'll see every single action race in the book and all that in between. Ready at Burger Time Wildman here in the number 44, currently hanging in there with that number 49, Sartage. Man, Sartage trying to hold him back, though, and keep him in play. The 49, slight little bobble there off of the exit, not able to get as much of a run off as the 44 now looks to take it over from him. Coming right back around now, the 44 gets a big opening on the bottom end. The 49 is going to strike while the iron is hot. That's Sartage. Can't get it back down quick enough, but look at the two right behind him. Hey, and Jared Darling as well. Ace Booth is watching from behind as Jared Darling is helping out. The 44 get a little bit of a push draft here. Smack dab in the middle of the fight. Jared Darling now looking for a daily double. It's, daily, it's double trouble for Sartage. Man, he's down two spots. And a big opening given to him right out from that spotlight into the zone. Beautiful sunlight, no clouds to be had around here at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, some problems down there for Joseph Costello. The number 3 slash 60 has come to a sudden halt here. That will that will bring us down to our PT Mr. Replay. And I got a feeling you may see a little bit of a, bit of a troubleshoot going on for him and the crew there. 
clips the uh, corner there out of three in four and then hits the wall out of the four, out of lane uh, turn four. And then he was already in the grass losing it. You can see the smoke just kind of burrowing in. And next thing you know, he's trying to get that thing stopped. He's just trying to keep it out of the way and don't drive back down. Slamming on the brakes. Realizes where he's at. Gets it back off there. And unfortunately, we'll have a little bit of work to do and a little bit of a cleanup job down there to get used to. Even the big dog himself, Dare Arnold, got a little bit of that grassy plains. Guess he was trying to open up his own lawn care service while he was at it too. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the technical difficulties here tonight, guys. I don't know what we're doing. Really hate having to put that screen up, but unfortunately, I just got to make sure everything's staying in line. Lori Bennett both saying no, Joseph. Yeah, I pay saying it, Lori, but unfortunately, it was one of those circumstances that happened. It's nothing you can do about it. He's a good driver, though. He'll get it figured out. Hopefully, we'll see him back on now. This track does is not seem it's like playing into his uh, his wheelhouse, unfortunately. That is a darn shame because it seems like he really had something going here with this track and his field. Coming off around out of turn one into turn two, the number 66, Justin R. Smith. Still barrowing down, giving himself a lot of speed and momentum in between. He's hanging in there with the field right now, and giving himself a lot of breathing room, a lot of bit of a chance to strive. Powercon, meanwhile, still not giving up just yet. Trying to give himself a little bit more of a fight chance to strike while the iron's hot. The number 383 Tyler Khan right ahead of Brady Burkertown Wileman. Wileman looks like maybe he can get something going on that Chevrolet Camaro tonight, but really the Chevys are kind of out class. There's more Subras and Mustangs out here than the Camrys are. No, excuse me, than the Chevrolet Camaros are. I don't know why I call them Chevrolet a Camry. <laughs> My bad there. And you see the damage done earlier on. That's what happened there between. Cole Williams and Kenny Heath. Heath is out of the race. He is done for. But for Cole Williams, well, the frustration, let's just say, is probably setting in more than anything. He's just pulling in laps. He has no choice. His front end looks so badly damaged. We would have thought literally that was Matt Kenseth's car after he took out Logano at Martinsville. Sartage, man, and Connor the Ferrari Trafari back at it once more. Top battle for eighth year as Trafari. We talked to them just a little bit ago. Has been getting tire saving figured out a little bit better. He's trying to get things more dialed in on the track, and he's been looking to do it here for quite some time. Lori saying Joseph is racing in honor of a special person tonight, so I really want to see him get the win. Ah, oh, Lori, that's, that one makes me really, that's hard to hear, man. That, oh. I got a feeling that probably has something to do with what's on the back of that thing then. Let's see if we can get a camera view on it. Producers, give me a look on it. Well, yeah, that definitely makes a lot more sense now. If, if you can't read what it says there, folks, it says forever in your hearts. We miss you, pal. Ah, right in the fields, bud. I'm presuming whoever's on it is right on that front hood. Producers, give me a close-up image on that one. Can't quite read the text there, unfortunately. Sorry to say. Floor, you could probably help me out in the in the comment section. Let me know what we got going on down there, sweetie. saying rain was her name oh shoot all right I well yeah, I guess uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave that one off to Costello let him know that um, our thoughts and prayers are with the uh, rain here in the family as well of them so these are definitely difficult times so our thoughts and prayers are definitely with them all at this time as Costello 
is probably getting a little bit of an idea of what he wants to do right now. He's going to just muscle the whole field around. He wants to get back on the lead lap ASAP, and I can't blame him. But he's got a long way to go because right now even Parker White just retook the lead here from Brendan Don Kohler. And knowing Kohler, he will not get very many opportunities to strike back. White's going to pretty much start taking this one in. And in the ice, McCurker and Justin R. Smith still at it here with one another. By the way, I need to know real quick, guys, is there any frame rate or stuttering? I know I keep putting that tech technical difficulty screen up tonight, but I've been having all sorts of problems tonight, it seems like, with the high race again. Not really sure why, but it seems like it's just been giving us a bit of fits and a bit of headaches here. looking good on my end so all right well I'll leave it at that then I won't do anything too, too drastic I'll just kind of leave it alone it might just be my end I don't know it just seems like everything's kind of off by a bit Man, Costello, though I'll tell you one thing this cat is literally just marching the field up but this just goes to show you what fresh tires will do for you and really because again he was at he's down off a couple laps here those fresh tires are giving him all the brakes he needs and a bit of a chance here and strike it back big and strike back on the run. Yeah, I think that's really what he's all that's what he's after and what he's trying to gain here. As we're about ready to reach halfway point so far, it seems as though that Parker White is getting pretty much get a little more comfortable as we go with this track. Pulling it right back into the pack here as well. Jared Darling and Tyler Khan still in a good end here, still fighting it out a little bit. Con looking for an inside pass here coming around out of the front straightaway down into turn one of the tri-oval. And I'm telling you, that tri-oval, it's just a dangerous little spot. If you're not careful, it's so it's a lot tighter of an area than Charlemagne Speedway is. You would think, though, because of the fact that it's supposed to be similar in shape and length here to Charlemagne Speedway, it would be it would be like the same kind of runs and all that. But again, Charlemagne Speedway is designed completely different. Whereas you have more of kind of that uphill battle with the entries and kind of that slope downhill on the exits here. You got a flat spots on the exit and the entries, if you're not careful, can string you up a little bit. Speaking of stringing up a little bit, it looks like one of them out there is getting strung up and kind of tied up a little bit. That is Mitch Hobbs down there, unfortunately, kind of caught off guard. Take on board here with Mitch Hobbs, see what happened here coming around that corner. Look like maybe a mess up in timing error here. I'm not sure to say the least, but the Nebula Esports 89. Oh, there it is right there. You see that flat spot I just mentioned a minute ago? Splitter goes right in. He's really lucky that thing did not catch some of that grassy plane. Thankfully, though, everything is okay and he is all right. Back out on the track right now, and now we're seeing here once more the 69 Anthony Gagitano kind of sneak his way in as Eddie Spruill in that Harley Davidson 27 pinked up machine. Trying to stay out of trouble, stay out of the way as drivers are a little all over the place. Sartar's man just barely screeching by with both of them there. That was a bad spot to be in, but yeah, he managed to stay out of that mess and stay out of that corner area. Corner what, what the corner area? What, what am I talking about? I was going to say that black hole area because it seems like every time you get stuck in there, it's really like a black hole. It's just your car gets trapped and you can't do anything about it. Instead, I said corner area. I don't, even, I don't even know what I'm talking about sometimes, folks. Sometimes I just literally just ramble something. I don't even realize what I said until I just said it. 6-6, six, six, Justin R. Smith now moved into the third place spot. Aiden the Iceman Kirker has gone into pit road. Maybe looking to get a fuel strategy down on the track. He's got that number three there of Mr. Yeah, Mr. Costello. 
And Costello right now still looking to gain more ground and more speed as he's going to use a little bit of that draft help from Justin R. Smith. But again, being about two laps down, that's got to be absolutely hard to even get around and try to figure out how to manage off of because, again, your timing has got to be perfect. you got to make sure you're not messing up the corners. And it just becomes extremely difficult, if you ask me, to be able to master and muster up the courage to even fight that out. But so far, it seems to be doing a pretty good job of it. Time differentials here tonight. Light now, best of the drivers here. Yeah, you're going to be a little surprised on this, but Brendan John Kohler was the fastest of the night so far. He laid down a 29.74. Nobody even got into the 29th other than him so far. I take that back. There's a couple now showing up on our screen here. Hayes Booth got a 29.97. And then the only, the only other one was Mitch Haas with a 29.94. But that 29.74, you know, fastest by far of the night. And that comes from Jen Brennan John Collard, your last week's feature winner. As Costello seems to be our only driver battling it out here with Justin R. Smith. And again, he's a lap or he's a couple laps down here. Costello desperately trying to find some help and trying to find something to get him back in this. Parker White is running away though from this. And remember last time. He was running away from the field. He had a little bit of an error there. Yeah, a little hiccup kind of sneaking in on him for the cautions. Larry Bennett Booth saying, Lord, these guys are such an incredible group. Big hearted guys are really highly shining each other in their personal lives. And despite being competitors on the track, just want to give them a shout out after a tough day. They had a mutual friend that attends in high school in Texas. They had a shooting. Oh, rough day, but they all spent the day on the phone supporting each other. Great guys. Oh, wow. Not going to get into the subject matter of that, but I'm glad everyone is okay, though. And my heart goes out to anybody that was yeah, traumatized or even went through that scenario there at Texas today. So our hearts, thoughts, and prayers are with everyone from here at PTM Racing TV. Yeah, I always said this world's just a crazy world we live in, but I guess sometimes it even gets a bit crazier when you don't even realize it. Hayes in the booth in the number two, now backing off a little bit here. Kind of the Ferrari, Jafari definitely showing he has been saving those tires up a bit. It seems like to me, more than anything, he is actually getting a lot more ground clearance, a lot more speed built up, and it's starting to work in his favor, I would say. But ultimately, you know, is that enough to really warrant the maneuvers in the passing zones? As the rest of our field comes off around, Mitch Hobbs, the 89, he was up there with the other half of the field here a little while ago. But unfortunate circumstances kind of killed off that momentum, gave him any chance of hope there. As Mike Cambeo, the number 24 Hooters Chevrolet Camaro, bringing out a little tribute scheme, if you will. We saw earlier today there that number seven of Alan Quickies designed up on a super lay model or pro lay model I should say of the dirt style. Whereas Mike Cambeo getting a little bit of a pink vantage here with the Hooters 24. And I believe I'm not mistaken, I think Chase Elliott ran a scheme like that, did he not? I'm not a huge Chase Elliott fan, so the folks that love him and all that, y'all can let me know in the comment section down below, but whether it be on our YouTube or our Facebook gun. Field still right now just kind of laying back, laying off a little more. Everyone's still just getting a feel for the track and trying to save up tires. We have one little three wide salute entering into the front tri oval here. Oh, that could be a little nar that could be a little bit of a gnarly run. Nice little pass though from the 89 of Mitch Hobbs and Connor the Ferrari Safari managing to sneak his way by there with Hayes Booth. Oh boy, that was a wild little moment there for just a brief second. Because again, it's just you have to realize how tight those corners are on that front straight. We're going to go back on board with Vince Hobbs. 
this is what that front straightaway looks like. You compare that to Charlotte Motor Speedway, it's clearly angled in a lot tighter, a lot harder, and much hops all over the place. Trouble here for the 89. And Jafari smells blood in the water like a shark in the ocean. He's ready to tounce on that one. Leading it back down now, Connor the Ferrari Jafari, and it looks like Mike and Bay are gonna have a little bit of a battle here. Boat driver still on the lead lap, trying to hang in there, and you can see right behind him a little 95 coming up on him. That's Parker Wire. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! And Mike and Bayo nearly took out the race leader, Parker White. Oh my! That would have been two weeks in a row. He got the short end of the stick there. He got very, very lucky. That was some great driving, though, on his end. To manage to work his way around that, that could have been disastrous. To the PT Mr. Replay we go. Take a look at this one. This was literally the break of the night, in my opinion. He caught a huge break. Watch this. Cabello looks for the run on the, uh, on the inside. But look at this, White, the presence of mind, he back, had to go into a three-wide slew standstill there, but he manages to keep himself under control and keep it somewhat in rhythm, but wow, that was nearly disastrous for him and his team. Strong little maneuver there and a very big break to say the least. Sartaj, man, really one of the only other guys right now, and Jared Darling that are still really within range of not being lapped down or being anywhere near that. But Brent John Kohler's got a four-second gap in between him and Parker White. Parker is currently still just laying in this one and giving himself plenty of room, plenty of options here. Yeah, I don't think he's going into pit road anytime soon here. I think he's going to stay out for a while. Take a look at some of the schemes here tonight as well, just to give you guys a little bit of a brighter sense, give a little showcase of the other drivers here. You see right here that is the big dog, Daryl Arnold. Guys rocking his little uh, pink scheme there. Salute to the Breast Cancer Awareness uh, Month, obviously, and help out raising awareness for everything out there. And he is also really one of the only guys I know that can not only help run a league and really keep up with the times and the tales, but also really put on some great events and some great showcases to help help out all those that are need and need and are timely needed.
looks like the entire field finally has gone into pit row as Parker White finally enables that. Brendan John Kohler went in there a minute ago. Okay, and the x Kirker and Inch Hobbs taking full advantage of it. Looks like Mitch Hobbs actually because of his pit strategy and his time dealing there will actually move him up into the race lead. He will now be your new leader so the WLE Sports crew does not quite lose the lead just yet. He'll hold on there with his team. But as he continues to push on and push forward here, he must have forgotten, though, that Parker is literally just right behind him. He didn't quite get him that far ahead. White now with the full strength, full center attack. Let's his teammate know, hey, I'm coming. And he does gladly oblige. Just open the door up, and White will take the lead up once again. You know, I thought he passed by so fast. He literally looked like he was front working with NASA because he was like a rocket ship sending it straight to the moon. And no, I did not mention anything about it going to the upper room this time anyway. Even their way in right now behind the pack here. The number nine that caught of the Ferrari Chafari put a few laps down. Might have had a bad pit stop there, unfortunately. I think he might have had a sort of penalty down there. Not sure what the racing officials are telling me here. They're not getting in contact. They're just keeping a close eye on these drivers. They said point blank tonight. We're not laying our eye off them one bit. They're keeping a close eye on them. Drivers that have left, unfortunately, tonight so far. We're only down to 18. Mason Thompson in the 81 and the 55. Kenny Heath both out for the evening. Troubles for them both. Thompson blow the motor. Heath, well, unfortunately kind of caught off in a little bit of a weird circumstance there. Coming around out of turn four. Which has kind of led to this moment we see now between drivers and the field competitors. Quarter four of Brady Bergstein. While I'm trying to hang in there while the 24 of Mike Cambeo takes his way across on the outside here. Moving his way around. And Cabello opening the door up once again, this time not getting in the way too much here. Take it for an onboard camera look here. We're going one lap around here with Brendan John Kohler as he looks to try to somehow catch Parker White, which you can see he's up there in that yellow car coming out around turn two, so it might be a chance here, but here's how they shape it up around here. Right now you can see the 84, that being Mark Lewis passed in by Kohler. We'll go one more lap around and talk about this, but you watch very carefully, you listen in. That throttle rhythm and that throttle control. The reason why you hear that so prevalent so ominously is because they're looking to keep everything in play, trying to keep the car in rhythmic run. Without having that, it can be a very treacherous little bad circumstance. And it's extremely difficult to master to say the least. In between now, we're coming back to the pack here. You see a little bit of a crossover in there. We just missed that Sartaj man there in the 49. Made a little bit of a gap shoot between him and that 69 of Anthony Gagatano in the 24 of Mike Cambeo. Managing to get a good little look in between and get him a little strup shooter maneuver there. Hanged onto the line real well and kept it in play and kept it on track. 
as they continue to move the field in and move the drivers around. Connor the Ferrari Safari going to get his lap back around at the Sadie Kirker, but uh, he still has Parker White to catch up to, and right now Parker's still pretty much walking away from him there. There's just not a whole lot you can do when they're just that fast, my friends. There's just really nothing that can play out. It's just hard. It's just a hard chance, hard shot, hard chances to make up. And obviously, from what we were told earlier as well, a lot of hard, a lot of hard dealings to deal with here with that number 60 of Joseph Costello, obviously causing a little bit of a scruffle there, coming off that front straightaway and kind of wrecked him in. He still kept the car intact. He kept it on the track, but. You know, he has quite a few laps down, unfortunately, and it has not gotten any better, even with the pit strategies being put into use. Credit where credit is due, and you got to respect the man for doing everything he can to stay in it. And you know, I mean young man, too. I mean legit, like he's driving like a legit man out there. That is what it takes, which is a lot of heart and charisma, to keep up with these fields and keep up with these drivers and give everything they got. Connor Safari still pulling off the stops, pulling out a little bit of speed in between. He's trying to hang in there. He's not going to give up, obviously, but, I mean, right now, anyway, this is not... It's just, just not suitable right now for, I feel like, what him and the him and all these other drivers were looking for. I think they really were expecting more of a closer encounter and closer racing, but when you spread out like this and you get kind of caught off in the traffic zone, it gets very, very difficult to catch up and really build up more speed around here. Way for Mike Cambeo now passing up on Aiden Yates McKirker. Kirker right now I think he's got to learn from what happened at Bristol. He's letting everyone go by. He doesn't want nothing to do with none of that stuff. He remembers what happened last time and oh boy I don't even know what the heck happened here but it looked like something went completely wrong on that back straightaway. Couldn't quite catch all of it there so we'll take a look at the PT Instant Replay. And we'll see where that kind of started to transpire out of. But that was a little bit suspect, to say the least, here. One more look at it here. We'll see Cambeo. He's getting a good runoff. And here comes the one of Jared Darling. And it looks like Cambeo just kind of got side skirted there. Kind of got himself off. The pace and off track. Tyre Khan actually making that pass around. So Kembeo once again kind of being a slight thorn there for that number 39, if you will. And that's definitely not something I think Kirker is going to be forgetting all too much around here. Building a ride down right now. Sartage, man, the 49 moving up top five here. Brady Burger Time Wildman, number 44, will be in the fourth, third. Justin R. Smith, so Brennan, John Kohler, and Parker White still have yet to exchange out the positions there. Kohler with the faster of the uh, upper half, but Parker White pretty much uh, 
kind of sealed the fate here, I would say. We're going to take a look at the lap times here between Kohler and Smith, and you can see the differences between those two as we get another lap punched in. And it looks like even Smith just got a lot of, just does not have a lot of speed there. There he finally pulls up a little time zone. Now I see what happens White, and it's like a completely different scenario. White has just literally just jammed off this one and just took in this one for a complete ride. Again, though, it we, was we, something we learned last night as well. You just cannot predict who's going to win it. That's why we're keeping our mouth shut on that one. Last night we were watched as the Fast and Fun Champion Power Cup Cup Series were out at Nashville Super Speedway and out of turn four on the final on the final lap, literally Kate Gailey saw, Kate, literally found her Kale Gailey, excuse me, he found literally just the last bit of burst of speed to get our drive get around, and one that was out of fuel there with Falk with Falk and unfortunately costing him that win coming up just a little bit short. Right back right now, Jared Darling and Tyre Khan. This is a little battle we got going on for the sixth place spot. Darling is right in the mix of the passion squad. Toyota Subra as the Ford Mustang will try to take him down. When the battles come, they do come, and they come pretty quickly. So they haven't necessarily been all over the place tonight. But next week, folks, when we see the drivers back in action, don't worry about seeing any drama. Because we have a little race by the name of I Racing Super Speedway next up on the lineup. And you want to talk about a track we have not seen in a while that I think definitely deserves a little relook at. I would say I Racing Super Speedway may just be where these drivers are going to get a little wild and frenetic. It's going to be a big one. So again, if you're, if you're not too enthused with this one right now, don't worry there because again... This is only just one of the races they will get on the schedule, but next week it's all out maddening and madness because iRacing Super Speedway is next, next up. You'll see that next week here on PT Racing TV. So again, guys, to make sure you catch all the action, make sure you catch it when it goes live, just simply like and follow us up here on Facebook. Whoa, 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 hold on a minute, hold on just a minute. Joseph Costello once again stopped on the back straightaway and trouble for him there, but what the heck happened here? I must wonder. Let's take a look at the PTM Instant Replay. We did see there was a there was one driver coming out of pit road, it looked like. And it actually was Costello, but there's more to the story than you realize. Here's a look at it. He may have caught it on the corner of your screen there as it was coming around. Well, watch this. Try to back off the car, just went straight right. He ends up going into the infield, and the frustration factor definitely got to be there for Costello. What a tough night for him and his crew, unfortunately. But you see, he comes out of the grass, out of the plains, trying to get center back up. Trying to get back on the throttle, back on the gas, get something figured out here. He's down in that same flat spot that we saw earlier on with Heath getting into trouble. As he waits patiently to get up to Pitt Road's exit. He just barely clips that wall. Actually got a piece of Mike Cambeo there. I don't know what on earth happened. I just know he did. He clips the wall there. Unfortunately, coming off exit, that is a tough break there for him. But did Cambeo get any piece of that too much? I'm not sure this may have been a mental lapse error or what happened. But you can see the car just kind of snuck right into the left there. And that's the end result, unfortunately. Cambeo was okay, though. No issues for him in the 24, but... Wow. Bit of a weird little circumstance there, to say the least. 
And once again, Parker White finds him in a spot, himself in a spot I don't think he wanted to even think about or even wanted to even be anywhere near whatsoever. But I think uh, that might just be what is going to happen here. He's going to have to work for this one. Field getting sprung around here. Everyone looking to get back into this one. Looking at it from all angles here right now with the laps continuously getting through and continuously coming closer to the end. Makes you wonder just how much these drivers have left in them. We'll hear from one of them that may have not too much left in, but still fighting that being the 89 of Mitch Hobbs. And Mitch, right now, man, this this car has pretty much seen the end of it all. And it's your teammate there in front of you has seen a little bit better days with that car. But you're still hanging in there, and you're going to get your lap back, it looks like. So that in mind, you know, what is going to be the playing field advantage here for you and the crew? Uh, Yeah, so I think we just went from ninth to 6th or 7th, which, I, I mean, it's free spots. I'll take it, and I get a free lap. So this is uh, interesting. Oh, let's go, Dodgers just hit a home run. Let's go, Justin Turner. Uh, but yeah, you know, this car is absolutely murdered. Uh, I slammed the wall earlier, did it to myself. Huge shout out to Cole Williams. He built an amazing setup. This thing will be the second fastest car in a long run. I think even better than Kohler if we kept it clean, but that's all me. And you know, Cole got taken out by uh, an interesting call. Oh, we gotta go. Yep, might wanna get going and uh, get back to it there, but thank you for your time, Mitch. Yep, absolutely. All right, as you heard, he says he's gotta get going, so they're gonna let him get back to it. Well, I guess they, I guess if you wanted to spice things up a little bit on PTRS TV, I don't think you could have found a better way to do it on this restart. There is only 12 laps remaining. And if you look at the pit strategy right now, this is definitely playing into the advantage of Kohler. Remember earlier, White was having trouble staying ahead. Although that could have been due to tire saving. But now there are no more tire savings at play. He's going to have to literally full charge, full send it to keep Kohler, Weileman, and Mann right behind him throughout the event of this one. This could literally change in the hands of one of the drivers in the Never League Esports or it could go to one of the guys on the Walter Esports crew. And maybe if it's maybe, we might see the Passion Squad boys finally have a say in this one. There is no telling. The only thing left to figure out is who's going to win it. Off to the green flag, and Parker gets a tremendous start. He knows he's got to get going quickly. But he didn't expect Parker a big wreck on the front straightaway. We've got troubles. We've got trouble down there. Major wreck ensued. He the expert Parker in the 39 set out of here. Someone went into pit road. I couldn't even tell. That was. Whoa. Holy smokes, what on earth happened here? We didn't even get off the line. What on earth? Here's a look at it. Oh, look at that one right there. Jared Darling gave a little bit too much of a push and I think a little too much of a shove and Gangy Tano did take a piece of it. Kirker's rear end there, unfortunately. The one that went into the uh, grassy plains and into the infield, that was the one of Jared Darling. We'll take one more look at it from another angle. Watch this. Darling's trying to get a push up front, trying to help out, but unfortunately he forgets that slower traffic can be a little bit disgruntling there to deal with, and unfortunately... Eddie Sprill was kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time. Face truck's lucky he didn't end up in the uh, shadow realm there, considering Jared would literally just wreck right in front of him. Holy smokes, and now this is getting to be a bit of a, a troublesome issue for the leaders. Now even the leaders recognize they might be a little bit in a bad spot. Parker White got a good start last time, but Kohler now knows his tricks. But even then, Kohler's only got a few more laps he's going to be able to get to really hammer down with. Ray Bergerstein, Wildman, Sartage, man, the only one that's left in this fight. 
I would bring in other drivers right now, but uh, this, well, I guess I really could only bring in one other driver here at the moment. Considering what's going on and what's playing out here. See if we can get in touch with the big dog, Daryl Arnold, but I'm not seeing him on the call list tonight. I think he might be uh, hiding from us, which I don't blame if he is. I wouldn't, I'd probably be doing the same right about now. <laughs> so I guess we'll leave it at that. So, I guess uh, whatever happened in Bristol did not stay in Bristol. We're going to have ourselves a little bit of a shootout here. We should have seven laps to go on the restart. Parker White is your race leader. The 95 looking for a little redemption. You gotta be wondering what's going through that man's mind right now, just knowing that he's been in this predicament before. He's been in this situation. Brady Burger Time Wildman knows what the key role is. He knows what the cards are at stake. I guess if you wanted to have an eight-second rodeo, you might have found it on that last one. But this next one up is not going to be an eight-second. It's barely. It's not even just going to be an eight-lap. It's going to be a seven-lap fight. Get the butt, get the beers out, get the ropes to swing in, folks. We're going drinking. This one's going to be a this one's going to be an end to this one. One more shootout, a little fight. That the not at the OK Corral, but down in the land of the mine, where the miner, where the miners grew and the mine, the money makes grow. The miner mate, the money is good here, and this one's going to be a fight out to the end between Kohler and White, Wileman and Man. You can see everybody is trying to warm the tires up and they are ready to jam the throttle in. They are going to have to watch though when they get off that front straightaway because we saw a minute ago what happens when you're a little bit too eager, a little too anticipating it. Shoot out out of turn three into four this time by someone is going to walk away with the W. Which one will it be? Setting the field in, White goes for it all, and Kohler's going to have to play catch up, but he's got a man pushing him a little bit here out of the green flag restart. Field stretch back, and Gaetano slowing up the whole field right behind him. Kirker and them trying to catch right back up in there. Look at Kohler, though. He's got a run coming up down the back straightaway, building the draft up. Parker senses it. He knows he's there. Man's in trouble. You got Wileman right in between there, giving him a little bit of a push and a shove. Kohler needs a jump. He needs a little bit of help on that short run. White is right in his sights. If he's going to make the move, he's going to have to hurry. Six laps remain. And almost a complete 180 to what we were talking about earlier on. This has turned into, like we just said a minute ago, a complete shootout. Yeah, it's not a crap shoot. This is really a legitimate shootout. Which one blinks first and shoots first? You only can see it here and now. Five laps to go here coming off on the front straightaway. Oh, but Kohler bobbles. He got into the wall. The time starts to gain up. White gets about a hundred of a second there on him. Looking to get a tenth. Coming up close. Kohler's little bobble into the wall. Slowed him down tremendously, but it doesn't seem to have faced him. He's back on the 23, 23 tundras of a second here. But he needs more speed. He needs a little more run. He needs a little bit more rhythm. 
Four to go. I don't know if there's enough time. I think that draft might be the only saving grace he has left because White is starting to run away. Sartaj, man, and Justin R. Smith are literally out of here between one another. It's Nebula Esports versus Pasta Squad. The team's out of here. Do or die time between these drivers here and now. Which one blinks first? Which one makes the mistake? Wildman about getting in the mix of the crux of it. Oh, that could have been gnarly there, but they managed to stay alive and keep it on track. Swinging them by. Three to go this time now. Smith looking for an opening, looking for a charge. There's a little bit of a downside there. Big dog Darren Arnold into the grass. Let's Trafari by him. Kohler trying to hope and pray for a little bobble from White. I don't I think he's going to get it. Kohler has not made too many mistakes, but that one mistake into the wall may have done him enough damage to give Parker White the opportunity to strike when he needed it to most. Tartage, man, and Justin R. Smith, though, still side by side as green flag flies high in the air with two to go. They are battling for everything they've got, trying to troubleshoot, trying to take this one advantage zone. On the outskirts of the back straightaway. Now Sartage is going to try to give one last little run on the bottom end and get it just a little bit ahead of, of Parker, or excuse me, of, of Justin. But Justin gets its out after on its earned four as the white flag comes out. Parker White finally seeing himself where he wants to be, but he still has to complete three good corners. Little bobble there coming up from Justin Smith and Brady Wileman. They get into it a little bit out of turn two. Wileman takes the advantage, though. He manages to hang on. Looking for Sartaj, man, down that back straightaway. He's going to try and dive her in deep. Looking for the run, looking for an opening. He's got a slight opening coming off, but out of three and four, Parker White can end his night in victory lane this time. Brandon John Kohler will walk away second. Third goes to Sartaj, man, fourth to Wileman, and fifth to Smith. And a bit of a wild run, a little wild moment or two mixed in, and a little payback, if you will. Parker White definitely felt like he was owed one and felt like he deserved it. Well, you don't say he didn't deserve this one at all tonight because he had to literally work off of two check restarts in that caution flag zone with only a few laps remaining, and we knew how fast Kohler was. This is what White wanted to see last week. Could not get it, though. Tonight... The complete 180. Nearly lasts the field, but walks away with the W. Here's your race tag coding. Race results now popping up on your screen. It is Parker White, your race winner. Second to Brendan Kohler. Third to Sartaj Mann. Fifth, fourth to Brady Burger Time Wileman. Fifth to Justin R. Smith. Sixth to Mitch Hobbs. Seventh to Tyler Kahn. Eighth to Aiden Iceman Kirker. Ninth to Hayes Booth. And 10th goes to Mark Lewis. Good showing from him, actually, in the 84. Good job on him for a top 10 finish. Definitely well worth his time and effort and good stuff there. As you see, the rest of our finishers here tonight. Well, top three will now join me here in the booth in just a moment. As we're going to take it down now. We're going down to Pitt Road here. I'll be right back with you, folks. All right, this thing is still on. I think we are ready to go here, folks. So let's get a word in right now as Sartaj Mann is now about ready to join us here with Nebula Esports crew. Here he is now, ladies and gentlemen, the number 49, your third place finisher here tonight at Texas Motor Speedway. And Sartaj, congratulations on that third place finish, bud. You really had to dive in deep and really give it everything you had to hold off the runs coming from behind. But hey, man, held off Wileman and Smith. How was that for you on the finish? You know. Uh, I don't know. I, I bet you were probably focused on Parker, but that was a hell of a finish for P3 there. Just a three-car go at it. Uh, I did get into Justin a little bit. I do apologize for that. But other than that, I mean, we had a rocket ship on the long run. One of the fastest on the track was on Parker, but one of the fastest there in the end. Uh, yeah, just made adjustments as race race went on and it helped us. It certainly did indeed end up working a little bit more in your favor, giving you a bit of a break or two and catching some opportunities when you struck at best. 
So I gotta ask you, my friends, are walking away with a W with you and your crew. Who do you want to thank you tonight? I just want to thank my team Nebula Esports, and I want to thank our sponsor Rocket Racing Setups. For sure, there. Well, nevertheless, our touch. Great to have you on board. Congratulations on your oh, trip. Oh, hold up. I'd also like to thank Cole Williams for building our setup. Don't want to forget that. Can't forget that. All right. Can't forget that. We're not, for, we're not forgetting anybody, are we? No? No more? No, 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 no. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. That's <laughs> it. All right. I'm glad to see that. All right. Well, nevertheless, Sartaj, congratulations, man. Great to hear from you once Thank again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sartaj, man, ladies and gentlemen, your third place finisher here tonight will now bring in the uh, the wild man, as I like to refer to him as, Brendan John Kohler. He's in with us now in the 36 and Kohler. I gotta believe probably the corner that did you win was probably turn four with only about three or four to go, wasn't it? Yeah, it kind of started a little earlier than that. It was just in the racetrack so hard. I had a quick conversation with Parker, and we both had the same problem. He just was a little bit, it was on the bumps just as hard as I was. But yeah, it started at entry of turn three, and it just was killing the bumps, and I didn't expect it and hit the wall, but. We were kind of off all night, so um, just I'll take a P2. That setup wasn't really good at all, so it was fun to drive. I started out really, really tight and ended really, really loose every run, so kind of had to change how I was driving every lap, but I love this this old Texas. It's amazing. I wish we were still going here. Yeah, I was about to say, had a lot of work to do. Had a little bit of uh, some time to shoot out with and keep it in play, and Nevertheless, though, my friend, you ended up doing just that and then some. So I got to ask you, as you're walking away here with the second place finish, is there anybody you want to thank you for this one? Just got to thank all my teammates, uh, the admins, and you for putting on the broadcast. And see you at the next race. We'll see you at the next race indeed. iRacing Super Speedway is coming up, so we'll see you there, my friend. Yep, sounds good. Thanks. Brendan John Kohler, ladies and gentlemen, your second place finisher here tonight in the number 36 Toyota Supra. The other Supra, actually all the Supras, uh, top three here. What do you know on that? So, But here now, ladies and gentlemen, he joins me here in victory lane. Give it up for Parker White. And old White Lightning finally strikes here down on the track. Uh, man, <laughs> you had a lot going on last week, but this week you put the demons aside and struck it big. Oh, yeah. Uh, we or I built, or my teammates, I have built a really fast uh, car for all these races. Uh, and with me switching teams in the middle uh, so far this season has really helped me because I may do a team where uh, the setups are so much better and I can kind of build off of that. And like for this race, I just built off a of Chicago and set up. Uh, and I, I did the same for Vegas too. And just these cars have been just complete rockets on the long run. Uh, and for this race, I was just, like, I didn't know what was going to happen because I hadn't done a run past maybe, like, 20 laps. So I was just going to play it out as it went on right from the start. I So I was saving tires. I let uh, Kohler go by. Uh, then it got to the point in the run where I reeled it back in and passed him. Then uh, we went green for a while there, but then Cole got a wreck by a lap car. Uh, then we pit. Uh, we got uh, on with another run. Then that run went green all the way. Um, then... Uh, we had to make a green flag stop, and by the time we were making green flag stops, I was just drifting the corners. I was just so loose. Uh, so when I put under green, I put a little less fuel in, so I didn't top it off. That helped a bit on that last turn, but then we caught an unfortunate yellow at the end. So uh, I, I was like, right, what do I do here? Because if I fill the car up, I'm going to be way too loose, but if I underfill it, then I might be too tight. So I kind of put it right in the middle, and what I didn't think about was that the car is just going to be hitting the ground in the corners. and. Uh, I went off into three and four on the restart, and I just killed the bumps on the bottom, and I kind of went straight. And I was just like, oh, well, now I'm in trouble. Uh, but then the next lap, I saw Brendan hit the wall, and then I was like, okay, he's going to be tight too. So I was just like, I just need to keep going, uh, and I'll have this one. Then uh, from there, I was just, just basically going to cruise on home to victory. Yeah, you cruise on home to a victory indeed here at Texas Mar Speedway. So I got to ask you, as you're walking away with the W, anybody want to thank you for that one? Yeah, just got to thank you, Christian, for the broadcast. Uh, Daryl, all the admins for the league, everyone that came out here to race tonight. Uh, I'd also uh, shout out Santiago Gutierrez for building this baseline setup. Uh, I'd also like to shout out North Horse Racing, SRD, and Soma Studios. Ah, for sure there. Well, Parker, definitely pulled off a great show here for you and your team and a good win nevertheless. So congratulations on that. We will see you next time out, bud. All right, thank you. 
Parker, call him. Don't uh, the white lightning, if you will, lightning in a bottle, whatever you want to say to him. He is your race winner here tonight. And race fans, that's all but going to conclude our event and our show. I think we have the next couple days off, Thursday and Friday, that is. But I'm not leaving you guys empty-handed. Saturday night, we're returning to YouTube exclusively. You're not catching it on Facebook. You will only see it on YouTube. The return of NASCAR Heat 5 driving is, once again, the PlayStation Pros are bringing some fun out for us in the Cup Series. So stay tuned for that. We will see that come on our show. But more info to follow that time around. So... For now, please be safe. God bless. Take care. Love you guys. Bottom of our hearts. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you next time when the green flag flies.